Today we're going to take on mission number six in the Vergeev group campaign. I'm going to get helicopters started and the voiceover actors should be speaking up shortly to let us know what our mission is. to start up here and then we'll talk about what we've been tasked with today. see the altimeter setting uh, if we didn't notice that we're gonna zero it out you know we could have uh, we would have thought we were basically 500 feet um, higher than we actually were and we're gonna be flying very low in this mission so that could have uh, really been a problem so you got to check that every time Good to go. So, here's our flight plan. Looks like we're gonna head towards Georgia, fly along the border, into the mountains, and our mission's gonna take place around here, where we've got to hook up with a Voron group, and they need some assistance apparently. Some intruders have uh, crossed over from Borda into our country. So let's go ahead and take off and head out there and see what, what kind of help they need. The weather's pretty atrocious today, so I've tried different methods flying above the weather, uh, weather and in the weather. Below the weather seems to be the best bet so go ahead and set my altitude pretty low the problem is is that once you get above the weather you know it's all blue skies and great weather but when you have to come back down through it in the mountains it's uh um, you can't do it fast, let's put it that way. It takes a long time because you have to do it very slowly because you end up, uh, if you do it fast, invariably you lose control of the helicopter and 
have to eject. The landscape's not even really recognizable with this with this fog. So we're pretty much through with the convoy missions. <clears throat> but we'll use those skills that we've uh, practiced on the low speed maneuvering when we get into the mountains, for sure. I'm gonna head out over the water so that I can get a good course to this to the next uh, waypoint after this after our current steer point. Especially since it's right there on the border and we don't want to cross it. Really hoping that new terrain that's supposed to uh, be coming out soon. I'm really hoping that that's going to be a couple huge steps above what we've currently got. Pretty important in terms of uh, the helicopter simulation. Not so important for the for the jets, but definitely key for the helicopters and ground combat. I've been reading, uh, doing some research about this area of the world, and I'm reading this novel by this Russian, I guess the first great Russian novel, um, and I don't want to butcher the guy's name, but basically the title of the, of the novel is A Hero of Our Time, and it was written in the 19th century, and it's really neat to get an idea of what the area was like and the people in the area, and these were beans that were going to be flying in. I just got done reading this chapter where they're riding horses through these ravines, and they called them Balki. I don't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's B-A-L-K-I, uh, because there's so many of these ravines along this, along the Caucasus. They got a name for them, and it's Balki. And I was thinking, if I ever create a campaign or missions in this region, I'll name one of my missions Balki. Not a particularly stable region, and apparently never has been. It's kind of like, it has a lot of similarities to Afghanistan actually, because it's sort of a buffer zone between empires. Uh, historically, and when the Soviets came in the 19th century, and then when the Soviets left, in the 20th century. So there's been a lot of battles and wars fought in the area for one or another empires need to control the area to, to defend their own countries, which border this, this buffer zone. The Ottoman Empire, the, the Turk, uh, Persia, which is Iran, and of course Russia, and even England, and France were concerned about the Russians ever expanding conquests during the Soviet era. 
actually before the Soviet era, era with the Tsars and um, Catherine the Great. And the people are, you know, they're, they called them the mountain people, a lot of them, like the Circassians and Georgians and Azerbaijanis, and although they weren't called that back then, they were kind of like a mountain people, and they sort of let these empires say, okay, you know, do what you want to do, it's like, don't bother us, we're up in the mountains, and, you know, they pretty much, uh, a lot of similarities with Afghanistan in, in that sense. they didn't just leave them alone. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's for sure. The word genocide has come up in the various resources that I've been reading uh, many times, unfortunately, various periods in this area's history. common thread in all the various books I've been reading about the area is that the people here are beautiful, um, particularly so, the men and the women. I guess uh, a common sort of phrase was to be as beautiful as a Circassian. And also a very, uh, very friendly, uh, especially in the Georgian region, I guess. Uh, there was uh, just very warm, welcoming people, um, brave, loyal people. Almost to the point of naivete, where they would trust, you know, these powers that would come in. Again, this is just my opinion from what I've read, and it certainly I wouldn't say that that's... Uh, I know nothing about what currently goes on in this region, so I wouldn't say that... I um, just don't want anyone to take this the wrong way. Just some things I've been reading, research I've been doing, and some of the opinions of those authors. But it... it it's just tantalizing. I want to visit the region. It's a mysterious, beautiful place. A lot of uh, a lot of different ethnic groups and different types of people. It's somewhat of a, of a melting pot, really. And cultures from both, it, it's also a, a melting pot of but the East and West because you've got the Eastern influence from the Persian uh, Empire that, that definitely laid down its influence over, over the centuries and the Turkish peoples. And then you also have, of course, the Russians' influence that it had over the people. And you've, of course, got the native people themselves. There's just a lot of different ethnicities and for the most part until the big empire started getting involved these people all these different people would would get along fine and uh, there was a great tolerance for different ethnicities it wasn't until uh, you know these powers would come in 
and try to basically take over the entire place that there started to be and separating people and and causing mass exodus to where the uh, problems started to arrive. All right, we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna try to hit this, uh, our steer point here, and we should be connecting with uh, the Voron group and get some sort of tasking. So I'm gonna, you gotta be careful when you're descending back here, especially with the bad weather. You have to do it pretty slow. Bear with me here. It seems like we're not even making any progress with uh, descending, but it's because, you know, we're going down a hill at the same time. Okay, looks like we have to fly within a certain range of uh, one of the soldiers on the ground. So I'm just going to fly in this direction here. Of course the wind wants to blow you over the border and get shot at. So always have to be aware of your location in relation to that river. I'm almost over it. Sharks, this is Warren. Respond to Warren 233. Okay. Warren 233 is online. Okay. 233 is Warren. Pursuing the intruders, group of six armed people. They started up the arc up stream along the western slope of Krugan 2 Mountain. Height 1053.3, zone 2690. Throwing us off. If we let them run up the stream and reach the forest of Pictova Mountain, we're gonna lose them. Requesting support. Okay. One, two, three, three, copy that. Now out, two, three, three. One got on the intruder's track. Requesting support. Okay. Two, three, three, now out. Confirming. You're clear to render assistance. Be careful. Okay. Affirmative, now out. Proceeding. Okay. All right, looks like we've got a real mission here. So let's have to proceed up this uh, stream until we encounter these intruders and engage them. So I've got all my autopilot channels engaged because I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to be hovering uh, for my attack. So it can be really tricky to set a hover in, in this ravine. So just uh, take it slow. <clears throat> you have to find these guys first though. See if we can set a hover here. That looks like it'll work.
not sure if they're in this little stretch or if I need to go up there and make that right hand turn. turn the target. And our schwal was pointed way over there, so let's bring it back. Okay, I see him. Sorry about that. There they are. Forgot to turn my laser on. And I've got to be aware of where this hover is wanting to take me. Because I do not want to fly into that mountain, obviously. Boom. Two, two, three, 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 in action now. Target Target is hit. Hit. three, in action now. Target is hit. Two to three, in action now. Target is hit. Unloading on a cannon. Oh. Okay, did we just lose our... There's one more we gotta get. Know where this guy went. Is that him? Wow, he's hiding behind there. It's gonna be hard. So, the primary objective is our flight plan. So, we've got to go back and proceed on that. I'm going to disengage my heading channel. And I know that there's some AAA over here, and I want to take care of that before we get too too close to that border. And we've got to turn auto turn off. See, all these little settings can really screw you up when you're like, why isn't it turning? Why does it keep turning away? It's probably has to, ooh, there's that AAA. All right, I'm gonna reset my altitude because it's wanting to also go down to 100 meters. All right, let's see if we can get this straightened out here.
Colossus 223. I'm hit. Now out. Do you read that? I'm hit. Didn't think he had range on me. 223. Now out. Well. Act by the Of course, my hover doesn't seem to be working naturally. Try to get our fall pointed in the right direction. That guy's still engaging us. It's pretty far away from him though. We already got hit once, but I think we can get him if uh, we do it somewhat soon. Sometimes it's hard to see where the Schwal currently is. There we go. All right. Where is this guy? I need from the fire again. Three, one, five. Passing waypoint. Two, there he is. All right. That's it for him. There's also another guy up here I want to take care of. Of course, I know all this because, you know, obviously I've flown this before. You would have uh, had to have figured this out yourself. They're really not too much of a threat, even though he did hit me. Um, that rarely happens, and usually you're hauling ass at 250 kph through these waypoints anyway. There he is. So. going on here? Like I'm getting a bit too close. Something's definitely going on with my hover settings. I'm going to let that guy go. Let's just uh, continue on with the flight plan. Probably was damaged when, um, when I took those rounds. I'm going to turn on, turn off both the Heading and altitude. Reset. Turn off my gun. All right. If I remember correctly, Pretty much all we have to do is hit the rest of these waypoints, and uh, I will see you guys next time.